6. stuff in the back for the Christmas shoebox ministry. You can check that list out. This is for August and September. Um, the great ministry we're a part of, and we're actually a, a big part of that ministry, and so very thankful for all your contributions there. Uh, you can get a list to tell you what we need. Um, we are, uh, let me see, all right, we're, we're going to have something very special for our church uh, this afternoon, something that we're looking forward to. Uh, we'll be having an ordination service this evening uh, for two new deacons uh, in our church, uh, Brother Wayne Williams, Brother Robert Burns. Uh, very excited to have these two guys uh, come be a part of our deacon body, uh, and we're praying about that, praying for them, and, and looking forward to the service this evening. So I've had some people ask us about that service. At 2 o'clock, even if you're not a deacon here, active, if you're uh, not a minister, if you've been ordained, even ministers and deacons from other churches are welcome uh, to come and participate at 2 o'clock. We're just going to have a, a, a meeting. Everything's already been decided and determined. Our deacons have been very thorough with this. The church has already made the decision, but there's some formality, I guess, uh, to an ordination process, and that takes place at 2 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, everybody in our church is welcome and encouraged to come. Uh, this is a service that, that means a lot to our church. These men that uh, have given their lives to this service, and so we want to pray about that. Uh, at 3 o'clock, a new tradition that we've started, we will have the opening of the service the two men who are being ordained wives will be singing a special together. Uh, so we'll so y'all come. Amen. Bless them. I get to pick the song out. And so, no. <laughs> uh, no, we're very excited about this evening. This is a big service for our church. And we really want you to come and be a part of that. Uh, and so very thankful for these guys, their families, and, uh, and for our church family. It's an exciting time for us. So everybody's welcome to come at three. And if you don't like ordinations and you don't like dickens and you don't like preaching, we got something else for you. Everybody likes ice cream. <laughs> Amen. So following that, uh, uh, we're going to have an ice cream social uh, just to celebrate uh, and honor what the Lord is doing and has done in our church. And uh, uh, so you come for that. Uh, and so we're going to have a, a sweet. We're going to have insulin at one door and metformin at the other. Whatever your need is, we're going to make sure it's met. Amen. Uh, and so you come on and uh, uh, we'll be ready <laughs> for that. Uh, new church year begins September the 1st. The Lord has so faithfully filled our positions that we were in need of in a very uh, unusual year as we've been planning for this. Our planning committee has done outstanding, or our, our uh, nominating committee done an outstanding job with that. We have really two needs left. This is a second and third grade Sunday school class teacher. If that's something you feel, see, these kids, some of these kids don't get to bathe, they don't get to eat, they don't get a good place to sleep. The only care they get in the world is at 9 30 on Sunday morning. <laughs> Those are my kids. <laughs> so, I know, baby. They're hungry and they're dirty and they're really going <laughs> to. Anyway, no, second, third grade class, if you feel led to lead that class, teach that class, that is a, uh, almost the best word I can think of is entertaining group. 
Uh, and so if you want to come and, and step in that role, we'd love to have you come. So pray about that. Let us know, either myself or somebody on our nominated committee or Miss Tiffany, and we'll, uh, we'll get you plugged in there. Uh, and we have a rotation with our children's church, and as we're getting going back with children's church, uh, the more the merrier. The more people that sign up for that, uh, the more uh, uh, sparse it is that you have to do it. So if you'd like to help us with children's church, uh, get with my wife, myself, Miss Tiffany, let us know, uh, and we'll get you on the list. And we very, very much appreciate that as that's a great ministry of our church. Um, Louisiana Baptist Children's Home Fall Food Roundup is taking place right now. You have from now to September the 15th to bring things in. There are lists in the foyer on the table uh, that you can get to tell you the things that we are contributing to that. Another ministry we're very proud to be a part of. So pray with us about that. Uh, also, next Sunday, or no, I'm sorry, two weeks from today, uh, we're going to be having, that's, that's the Sunday of September the 5th, our friends, the Lord family. They're coming through this part of the country. Uh, they're going to be here singing for us that Sunday morning. They are a great blessing to our church, great friends to our ministry, and we're very happy to have them come and be a part of our service that day. Uh, and so you be here for that, that Sunday morning, and ready for a blessing. And September 26th through the 29th, we will have revival here at the church starting Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to have a Sunday school emphasis that morning, try to get as many as we can in Sunday school. Uh, we're praying for 450. Hey, miss, swing, swing big. Hey, man, that's a, <laughs> anyway, no, we're just going to do the best we can. Amen. Uh, but we're hoping for a big group there. We're going to start that Sunday morning in revival and go through Wednesday night. The Allen family is going to be doing music for us. Got different preachers for each service. We're going to have a big old time. Uh, so be praying with us about revival. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we're going to be receiving a love offering. We've had some different folks in church that's gone through some different things. We're just now getting back to having some normal services. Uh, uh, but for Ms. Jessica Bradford, their family, uh, we're going to be receiving a love offering to help you and your husband and things that they've been, uh, been going through with COVID and sickness and everything else. So be praying about that. Uh, so next Sunday, you come ready to be a blessing to them. Uh, we've got some more we're going to do in the next few weeks ahead. So we're praying about that as well. So uh, excited about that. Amen. So be praying about how the Lord would have you to give there. Any other announcements? Yes, sir. So that's this Saturday? Okay. What? 6.30, meet here at the church. Okay, good deal. All right. Y'all glad to be at church? Say amen. 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 Y'all have been good to us. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you again today for the privilege to come. And Lord, as we've already sang and testified, what a blessing to be a part of the family of God. Uh, Lord, we, we are a, a privileged people uh, to be able to enjoy the many blessings that we do as your people, as your children. God, even further, we are able to enjoy those blessings as your children to be able to live in this country, uh, to be able to live, I would say, in this part of the country. And God, I pray that you'd bless our leadership. I pray you'd bless pastors across our land. I pray that you would bless those in local government, state government, Lord, the federal government. Give them wisdom. Uh, give them some sense uh, to be able to say and do and make decisions that we need so desperately at this time as the whole world, it seems. Uh, is just in utter chaos. We need you. Uh, Lord, I don't know how many messengers you have to send to get our attention, but Lord, I pray here at Antioch we can testify we're listening. And Lord, we want to do whatever we need to do uh, uh, to, to advance the gospel, to continue on the path that you've put us on, to be the people of God you've saved us and called us to be. And Lord, in that, we've come today to worship you. So I pray you be magnified. I, I pray you touch every instrument every voice, every lesson that's already been taught as it ministers to our heart, the songs that will be sung, the prayers that are prayed, the sermon that will be preached. God, be God in this place today and let us respond to that accordingly and we'll thank you and praise you for all that's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
temptation comes my way when I cannot stand up on my knees. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. When I cannot stand up on my knees. all you can do is say amen. Brother Gerald, I don't know how fast you can do this or if you even can at this point. Uh, if y'all will, open your Bibles to Psalms 118. Psalms 118, verse 24 is where we'll be looking this morning. You know, Sunday... Worship is our appointed time to come together and basically say, Lord, I need you. And it's, and it's almost, a, a, Lord, I need you tomorrow, and I need you right now. And I'm here to worship because I needed you yesterday, and here I am because of you. I wouldn't be here today working for his faithfulness yesterday. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for his faithfulness today. And I couldn't survive today if it wasn't for the hope of his faithfulness tomorrow. Amen. Who would want to go to tomorrow if you knew the Lord wasn't going to meet you there? But we can face it courageously. And I know there are people sitting in this building this morning who it took everything you had to get through this week. It took everything you had to make it to this day. And it took everything you had this morning through failed alarms, bad feelings, headaches, sick stomach, kids. I'm not going to go too far, amen? <laughs> but I know that there are some Sundays that you and your kids don't wake up singing every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. <laughs> And mama's in there at 7 o'clock whipping up all the breakfast and dad comes in with his slippers and his robe and, and, and pours a cup of coffee and, and kisses mama on the forehead. No, oh, darling, it's just good to be together. And the kids come running in. Oh, mommy, daddy, I love you, I love you. It's church day. Let's get ready. And they come in dressed and clean and ready and nothing in their eyes. Their hair's in place. And it's just lovely. It's just heaven on earth on Sunday mornings. And you get in the car and everything works good. You get here 10 minutes early and you walk across the parking lot and be bopping, having a big time. You come in and sit down. I know that that's not Sunday for most of us. And as a matter of fact, if anybody had a Sunday like that, we'll let you have the podium for a few minutes to let us know your seat. <laughs> most of your days like most of our days. And I, I just got overwhelmed in the song. Lest we ever forget how desperately we need the Lord in our everyday lives. 
Every moment, every hour, I need you. Amen. Stand with me as we read this verse together. I'm going to do my best to stay on the track. I don't even have my, hand me my timepiece, Mama. <laughs> They're going to regret it if I don't get this. They're going to regret it either way. I just like to keep up with how long I'm keeping them here. <laughs> verse 24. Thank you, Brother Gerald, the all-star of the, of the always making it work. <laughs> this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I love you. Lord, we ask you to meet with us this morning. and It almost seems funny to ask it because you're here. So I pray, Lord, that you would just do what you want to do. Move me out of the way. Say what you came to say. May it not fall on deaf ears or hardened hearts, starting with mine. Minister to your people today. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, you don't have to talk to many people to find out how big a mess the world is in. And you don't have to talk to many people to find out how big a mess churches are in and how big a mess people's lives are in, communities are in. Kids can't wear Crocs to school anymore. <coughs> That caused more trouble than anything. <laughs> I had more fun with that. I love the heart of this verse. Because there are some things that you miss if you read it too fast. We're going to do our best to draw out of this this morning. And I hope that this will be a blessing to you on your pilgrimage. Understand me when I say to you this morning, not because I'm saying it, I'm just repeating what I've read to be true, is that your life is just a pilgrimage. You're here for just a moment. And your goals and your dreams, how many of us have found out, are oftentimes not going to be your destination. And it's not that you settled or ended up in a lesser place. It's because God had other plans for your life. Don't ever begrudge your suffering because it's through the process of suffering that a pearl is formed. It's through the process of a grain of sand taking, taking seed inside a clam and causing infection and irritating that clam for years before a pearl can be formed. You can't have a diamond without a lump of coal. Like the old singer said, I am just an old lump of coal, but I'm going to be a diamond one day. Amen? Amen. I, I want you to understand this morning that the present place that you're in is a place of purpose. It's a place that there's a reason for. Your mistakes might be a part of your story. They may describe you, but they don't define you. Your shortcomings, your sin, your frustrations, your questions about life. And I, I, our friend Mark Lanier wrote a song that he sings, All the Days That End in Y. Because so many of our days, we scratch our heads. I look at the situation in our country. I look at the situation in our world. I, 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 I hurt for our veterans who invested their lives, for those who we memorialize, who gave their lives for what's going on in Afghanistan to be overdone and, and, and overturned and mocked after trillions of dollars, thousands of lives, 20 years, and they're right back, if not even more dysfunctional than they were when we got there. And it honestly, in a lot of ways, reminds me of our lives. Because the Lord can show up in our lives and do something wonderful and give us great favor and many blessings. But how we respond to it is oftentimes going to determine how we live our lives after that. I love the resolve and the heart of the psalmist as he writes this verse. And there are some things, again, that I think we can glean from this today that I think will be a blessing to you on your journey. One, catch this. This is a realization. This is the day the Lord has made. That day might be at the hospital. That day might be at the funeral home. That day might be at the church. That day might be the brightest, happiest, sunshiniest day of your life. That day might be the cloudiest, 
dreariest, rainiest day of your life. But you have to recognize in your heart, whatever the day and whatever it holds, this day was made by the Lord. And I'm here for a purpose. This day was a day that was given by the Lord. It was made by the Lord. He is the maker and the creator of all things. Nothing happens under his watch without a reason or a purpose. Matter of fact, we can read in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together. Even the worst day of your life and the worst thing that's ever befallen you, all things work together for the good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. And this is a great benefit and treasure that's reserved for the people of God. Because I don't know about you, but I've had a few bad days. And there's a part of me, I guess, that wants to say when I have a bad day that God couldn't be anywhere close to this. Or that that bad day is something that I've done by my own making. <laughs> Or that my bad day is something that I deserve. Don't ever let your flesh or the devil or the world tell you that. Or that my bad day is something that I don't deserve any better than. That I shouldn't have any better. And where I can agree and say amen to the fact that because of what you've done, you don't deserve any better. What I want you to know is because you're a child of God, there are better days coming. I guarantee you that, amen. There are better days coming for you, whether in this life or the next life. And listen, if your life on this earth was short and, and stricken with trouble, if you found Jesus and die and go to heaven, it's worth it. It's worth it. So don't begrudge your suffering because it may be grief now, but hallelujah, it's going to be glory later. Amen. That's how I can watch the Middle East. That's how I can watch the, uh, uh, the oils in Texas, but the dipsticks are in D.C. I can watch what's going on. In D.C. I can watch what's going on in, in even our community and oftentimes in different people that are struggling or suffering in our church family and we want to do and don't know how to do or what to do and you hurt and mourn and cry with people. I'm just glad to know that this is not it. And even though this day might not be the day of your dreams, just take a little rest in the fact that this day is the day the Lord made. And listen to where he goes from there. This is a day that the Lord has made. And so he says, because of that, we will rejoice. So not only is there, is there something that he had to recognize, but there was something that he had to resolve to do. And that was that I don't care what this day looks like. I'm going to rejoice. And I'll say this. Sometimes my rejoicing might be jumping and shouting and carrying on and having a time and sometimes my rejoicing might not even be something you can see. Sometimes my shout might be, might be squeezed down to a whisper. But if all I can do is whisper, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. If all I can do is whisper my praise, then I'm going to whisper my praises to the Lord. Because even on the worst day of my life, God is good. And He knows what He's doing. He's good and He's faithful and He cares for His children. This is a day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. Now, I want you to understand. It's kind of like being thankful. Being thankful and giving thanks is two different things. Being thankful is a state of emotion. It's a state of being. But giving thanks is an action. So I can be thankful, but understand in my thankfulness, I also have, I would say, responsibility on one side of it. But don't miss that it's also the privilege to give thanks to the Lord. I can be thankful for something you do for me. And it's not that you don't know that I'm thankful. But doesn't it mean a little more when you feel and hear and receive someone's appreciation for your sacrifice? Don't you think God, even though he might know our heart today, even though he might know today that we're thankful, don't you think he still deserves to hear us say thank you? Have you ever read the parable of the lepers? Nine of the lepers that Jesus healed along the way, they ran off rejoicing over their healing, but there was one that came back, and he walks back to the Lord, and he just comes back for the sole purpose to give a word of appreciation for what had been done. You could tell by the action of the others that they were thankful for their healing, but there's also something to be said about going back to the healer and thanking him for what he's done. And you know what Jesus asked that one? A question that shows us that Jesus in this life, even though he was the God-man, that he was every bit as much human as you and I are. In that he had emotions. He had feelings. 
And he asks, even though he was very thankful that one of them came back, he asks him this question. Where are the nine? Don't you wonder, maybe come Sunday, when we worship, and I know there are people who can't physically attend service right now. There are those who are watching with us online, and we don't discredit their worship or contribution to worship because they're not physically here. We thank God for them tuning in. But there are also some today who've chosen to do something besides worship God. There are also those today that see the sun come out and the sky shining blue and that water crystalline on the lake or something that needs to be done in the woods or whatever the case may be, or, or ball field, name it, name it and claim it. Whatever it might be, there are people who choose something over God and I wonder if God doesn't on Sunday look around sometimes and wonder from the heart of worship, from those who are worshiping, where are the rest of those people? Where are those other people that I died for? Where are those other people that... Wouldn't be able to draw a breath today if it wasn't for me. Where are those people who I have held and undergirded with the right hand of my sovereignty and guided them safely through every detail of their lives that have been delivered from sickness, been delivered from tragedy? There are things that we know God has saved us from and there are things God has prevented in our lives that we will never know. That none of us, the reason you didn't have a wreck today on your way to church is because the hand of God protected you. That's the watch care and the affection of our God, that he takes care of us. The song, again, just instilled in my heart how desperately I need God when I go to bed. I need God when I sleep. I need God when I wake up. I need God when I eat. I need God when I preach. I need God when I sing. I need God when I stump my toe. Anybody else real in here? I might forget it for a moment, <laughs> but I'm instantly reminded that I need God in my life. And what a favor it is for us to know that we've got him. Aren't you glad? There's some things in here. If we went around the room and said, what do you need today? Could you imagine what we would all hear and what we might all say? People would say, and I'm sure a lot of it would be uh, 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 maybe monetary or maybe be because of health related, whatever it might be. There's so many things that we have need of today. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You need God today, you got him. You need Jesus today, you got him. You need to be saved today? Done. You need a million dollars? You in trouble. <laughs> Amen? You need Jesus? I got something for you. You need somebody to help. I'm not saying God can take away what you're going through this moment. Let me take that back. I'm saying he can. I'm not saying he will. But I promise you this. He'll meet you right in the middle of your trial. He'll meet you right in the desperation of your hardest times. And he will hold you and care for you and minister to you and teach you in those times how to trust God. And I'm going to tell you, there are going to be times in your life you're not going to make it without the Lord. There are going to be seasons that you go through. God's not a suggestion today. God is not a, 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 a part of our life. I've said this a few times the last few weeks. If he's your co-pilot, switch seats. He don't have any intention in being an advisor. He's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. And I'm telling you, Jesus deserves to be Lord in your life for what he did for you on the cross of Calvary. Amen. It'd be one thing if Jesus was just floating around out there as an option and had never done anything for you and was waiting on you to, to come and, and sign up for something. But that's not the situation. He already took your sin to the cross and died your death on the cross so that you could be saved by putting your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ. You could do that today. And you can agree with the psalmist. It can go from your worst day of your life to the best day of your life. And either way, you can find solace in this. This is the day the Lord made. And because the Lord made it, and because the Lord made me, saved person, because the Lord remade me, when he saved me, I'm going to rejoice. I, I love the, the resolution in his, in his wording, even just so simply, we will rejoice. I don't care what they tell me on the news. I don't care what's going on at the White House. I don't care what's going on at the church house. Amen? I will rejoice. Why? Not because I feel good. Not because I want to. Not because of any other reason than I realized when that sun showed up this morning and that sky was still where it was and not right on top of my head. And like Miss Reed, I hear you say all the time, I'm still above ground. Amen? Because I'm on the earth and not in the earth. 
We will rejoice. And let, me, and let me say this. When I'm in the earth, you just go ahead and make note. You might not know I'm rejoicing, but when they put me down, I'm going to be rejoicing more then than you ever seen me. I, I'm scared of y'all. I'm scared to act a fool up in here, but when I'm telling you, when I get to heaven, I don't care, man. I'm, I'm going to be, it's going to be on. Amen. I heard a song this morning. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that'll be. Amen. We'll sing and shout the victory. We ought not wait till we get to heaven. Amen. Why? Because this is the day the Lord's made. When you wake up tomorrow morning, before you turn the news on, before you realize you're out of coffee, before you realize somebody forgot to put water in the Keurig, <laughs> first world problem. <laughs> Amen? Before you realize that you don't have what you need to make your breakfast or whatever you need to make you happy or satisfied, you just look around and realize, I drew a breath. Old pump still beat. Might be too fast. Might be too slow. Might be off rhythm. Amen. But we got some guys that got that fixed this last week. Amen. We can help you there too. This is the day the Lord made. When you look at your kids in the morning, you realize God gave you the great privilege to be their mama or their daddy. This is the day the Lord made. He let me be their daddy. He let me be their mama. He let me be her husband. He let me be his wife. This is the day the Lord made. I'm going to rejoice. He said, and be glad in it. And I love, again, the thought of being thankful and giving thanks is two different things. I can rejoice and not be glad. I can rejoice and not be glad. Because I can make myself do something outwardly. I can make my, I can say thank you and not be thankful. <laughs> I can rejoice and not be glad. You can tell somebody you love them and not love them. Matter of fact, we, we, we've caught ourselves in a rut in society where we're all about telling somebody that we love them. You find out who loves you when you need them. Right? You find out who really loves you when they need you. Amen? My Uncle Bob, I, matter of fact, this is my Uncle Bob's tie. I don't wear it very much. This is the only tie he had when he died didn't have food on it. My aunt gave it to me after I preached his funeral. He was one of the first people that let me preach. He was the chairman of deacons at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Pleasant Hill. And we went down there. That morning, a wagon train went by the church while I was preaching. That night, half the church came on ATV. Country. You think we're in the country. That's a country church. <laughs> preached to about a dozen people. One of the first opportunities I was given to go down there and preach. My Uncle Bob was one of the funniest, most sarcastic, dry sense of humor people you ever met in your life. He never told me he loved me, not one time. And I told him 10,000 times because it was so funny to watch him work so hard to not tell me. And I'd say, you know I love you. And he'd just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew it all the time. But I'm going to tell you something. I knew from the moment he came into my life to the day he died that he loved me. I can tell somebody I love him and not love him. And I want to say something to, to I, and, and we say things like this generation. I want to say something to everybody in this room. It's more important to show somebody than to tell them. Now, people will curl up on a couch and blame all their problems on somebody never telling them they love them. Never mind the fact that they worked and protected and provided and cared for them and taught them and mentored them and raised them, but they didn't tell me, so I got my itty-bitty feelings hurt. But somebody can tell you they love you 15 times and raise you to be an absolute dud. I'd rather somebody love me than just anyway. I don't have anything. I'm not preaching anything this morning, so I'm just going with it. <laughs> this is the day the Lord made. So we will rejoice. But the, the, the catch-all is this. We'll also be glad. And that's the difference. If my rejoicing or my worship or my praise or my adoration comes from an insincere heart, then it's not going to do a whole lot. See, you'd rather somebody say, praise the Lord, sincerely, than somebody shout and run a lap around the room and not be right with God in their heart. Now, the problem is, you and I don't know. So it's not ours to gauge, is that person sincere or are they sincere? The real question is, am I sincere? I don't have time to figure out your problems. I got too many things to worry about on my end. Amen. I have too often to gauge what's determining my worship and what's motivating me than to try to figure you out. I've heard people all my life try to figure somebody else out. I've had people say about kids before in church, well, they looked at their phone the whole service. Well, if you knew that, you were looking at them the whole service. Neither one of you looking where you're supposed to. 
I mean, not everybody gets to look at a preacher that looks like this. <laughs> not everybody's got a preacher that's so easy to spot from the back of a room this long. Amen? I mean, there's some guys you'd have a hard time finding. Find. I'm here, baby. I'm here. Amen? I'm all here. <laughs> Amen? The reality is, is I'm so busy trying to figure you out, I can't be glad in my own heart because I'm trying to see if you're really real or not. Well, I can't really be real myself if all I'm worried about is you. I can't really be worried about me if all I'm worried about is you. So this is the day the Lord made it. We won't rejoice and be glad in it. So I can rejoice over here while I'm milling-mouthing over here. I can rejoice over here while I'm trying to judge you on this side. I can rejoice over here while I'm trying to gauge whether or not you're being real. I don't have time to be real because I'm so worried about what somebody else is doing. And I've seen people in church. I've been in, you don't believe this because we don't ever see stuff like this here. I've been in church where people jump up and run around the room. I've been preaching before when folks get shouting and just have a spell. I, I've been in church and I've had folks say, well, I just wonder if they meant it or not. Well, I don't have time to figure that out. That's between them and God. Here's what I do know. It's easier to calm down a fanatic than it is to raise the dead. Amen? <laughs> this is a day the Lord made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. See, there's a decision that's brought about by this resolution, and that is that I'm going to do more than just make. I'm going to say this. There are times that we rejoice and we're not glad, and that's okay. Because sometimes life just gets us down. Sometimes hardship gets us in a place. And thank God for those who, even when they can't, Tap into that gladness in their heart will still be faithful to rejoice and to worship and give God glory. That's a resolve in people's heart that I envy. And I thank God for you to be able to overcome your storms in your heart and not say, look, I'm going to give up on God because I'm not feeling it today. Thank God for your faithfulness, even when you don't feel it. But what he's saying to us here is we have to resolve in our hearts not only to rejoice, but to do it from an attitude and a spirit of gladness. And that's not for God. That's for me. I, I, don't, I don't need to be glad for God today. God is not concerned with my happiness. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But God is not concerned with our happiness. Because happiness is determined by happenings, and happenings are ridiculous. <laughs> Because they're, they're fickle and they change just like that. What he is concerned with is our joy. Because joy is a fruit of the Spirit of God. And when I am in the presence of the Spirit of God and my heart agrees with this word, even though I might have tears in my eyes or coursing down my cheek, I'm going to rejoice with gladness because I am at one with my Savior. And that is the greatest experience in all the world. Worship is such a privilege. Church is such a blessing. Praising is such, a, such an awesome thing for us to be able to do. When we get to start our weeks in the house of God, it, it, it does so much. I have never, you hear me? I've had some bad experiences in churches, but I've never had a bad service. I've never went to church and thought I wished I wouldn't have went. Amen. Not one time. And I've heard some terrible sermons. I've preached some terrible sermons. I have heard some of the awfulest singing you ever heard in your life. Amen? But I've never been in a bad service. Not one. I've been in churches. I've been in funerals. I have been, I'm telling you, not one time can I say I've been in a bad church service. Because there's something about the people of God worshiping the God of the people. That's what heaven's going to be. In Revelation, when John saw the new city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, he heard a voice that came from heaven, and the Bible said the tabernacle of God is with men, and he's going to dwell with them. Now, you know how good this service can be. When we come to church, and the music is as good as it was this morning, and the preaching's on, on spot, and God's speaking, and the Lord's moving, and the Spirit of the Lord's here, could you imagine today what our service would be like if the person of God was here? I wonder how we'd worship if he, if Jesus was standing in this room. I wonder if the things that are distracting you now would distract you then. I wonder if the things that are on my mind when someone else is singing or someone else is preaching would be on my mind if Jesus Christ was standing in the room. I wonder if we'd be able to take our eyes off of him. I wonder what he would say. I wonder how he would start. A lot of times Jesus would start and Paul kind of used this same technique. Jesus would start by being a blessing 
by building them, by loving them. You can read the, the letters to the churches in Revelation and how he told them the things that he was thankful for that they were doing, the good things and where they were, but then he would come back with, this is what we need to work on. This is what needs to be done. This is what I have against you. This is what we need to do. Paul oftentimes, as we read last week, and I thought we were going to do this week, in the book of Colossians, would start out, he, he talked to those churches about what a blessing they were and how good they were doing and all the things they'd accomplished and what the Lord had blessed them with and blessed them to be to other people. And then he would come back and he'd lay it on them. I, I wonder what Jesus would say to us if he stood at Antioch Baptist Church today and looked at our faces, not in general, not to the world, not to the country, not to the people or not here, but to the people who are watching with us today and the people who are live in this service today. If Jesus Christ was standing here, I'm going to go ahead and warn you that I'm not going to be able to conclude by telling you what he would say. So if you think I'm building up to that, I'm going to disappoint you. I'm just saying to you, I wonder today, what would Jesus say to us? And when he got ready to close the service, I wonder what Jesus would say. And I'm going to tell you what that is, if you hear that thunder. We have a fan strategically placed in the pulpit. I have lost the fuzz from my microphone. And so there you go. So it, it catches it when I look down, and then the fan just finds its way. It bounces off my belly button like a cave in a canyon <laughs> right up to the mic. What would Jesus say to us today? Would he talk about that fan in my belly button? Probably not. <laughs> But I believe it would be easy for me today to rejoice and to be glad, no matter what was going on in my life, if Jesus walked in. I want to say something to you. Jesus looked at a group of disciples, and he said, it is necessary for me to leave. These men, for the last three and a half years, had left their families, they had left their careers, they had left their homes, and they had followed Jesus radically with their lives. And now this Savior, this Lord, that they have espoused themselves to in their life, they literally left everything to follow Jesus, and after three and a half years, he turns to them and says, all right, I'm leaving. And this is what he said. This is why I have to leave. Because it's expedient for you that I go, but I'm going to send somebody. They didn't understand that. I don't know that we fully understand that. But you get into the book of Acts in chapter 1 and chapter 2, you find that he did send somebody. And the one that he sent was able to go, not where Jesus couldn't go, but to go everywhere that he couldn't be at the same time. And that's why every church in the world can be having service right now, and Jesus is there. He sent his Holy Spirit to come and be with his church. And I want to tell you something. Here's what his Holy Spirit does. This is his job. Twofold. He illuminates the word of God and he magnifies Jesus Christ. That's what the Spirit does. The Spirit can't help you by himself. The Spirit is here to facilitate you to Jesus, to get you to the Lord, to show you where to go, and to make it possible for a sinner to come into grace with Jesus to be reconciled to holy God. And so he sends the Spirit of God to give us what we needed, but also for us to be able to come in this place today and recognize that we're not praying to a God in heaven, even though we pray to the God of heaven. We're praying to the God that's right here with us this morning. I, I'm not singing today, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, and hoping that he hears from heaven, but I'm singing, Lord, I need you, I need you, and it's as if he was sitting right here. People say my prayers don't get past the ceiling. Thank God they don't have to. Because the Spirit of God abides in you. He can hear words you don't even say. He can hear prayers you don't have sense enough or emotion enough or, or, or whatever enough to even articulate. So much so that Paul said our relationship with God through the Spirit that we would run to Him just as a child. And he uses the phrase Abba Father, which is the, the intimate word that we would find to say Daddy. That I am come into this relationship with God and by the presence of the Spirit of God today, I have one that I can call on who knows my every need and I can groan, Paul said, in the Spirit and just say to him, Abba, Father, and he knows the need that is in my heart and he can, and can discern my prayers when I don't even have sense enough to articulate them. Amen. Man, that gives me chills up my spine. That or this fan. One, I don't know what, listen to me. 
To know that we serve a God that's so caring. I know we're going through some stuff. And I know the world's in a mess. And I know the country's in a mess. And I know your life may be a mess. I just want to invite you to come to Jesus today. He knows how to deal with a mess. He knows how to get right in the middle of your mess. And help you to say, in the middle of your mess, this is the day the Lord's made. So I will rejoice. And I'm going to be glad. Because I know who made me. And I know who I belong to. And I know he belongs to me. And this comes from the psalmist in a heart of one who has failed God. In the heart of one who has had to run for his life from his king and from his own kin. And he said, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. If, if you could have an anthem for the day, what would your anthem be? If you could say something that would be your slogan for the day, what would it be? I, I pray today that whatever you're going through and whatever your situation and, and whatever the bank tells you, whatever the doctor tells you, whatever your spouse tells you, whatever your enemy tells you, I hope that you can put this over the door of your life today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And let me tell you something. Sometimes that comes with great tone. You know when somebody speaks from their chest when it comes, this is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And sometimes you're going to say it like this. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it says the same thing to God both ways. And it says the same thing to me. Don't let go of your gladness. Don't turn away from your rejoicing. Because the God of heaven knows this day better than you do. And he knows you better than you do. And he's in control. <laughs> Trust him. Stand with me. Father, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm glad you're doing it. And I just want to say again today, we need you. And we've come together today corporately. We've come together collectively to say in one accord, God, we need you. And you are a need meeting, mountain moving, soul saving, burden lifting, devil stomping God. And we worship you today. I don't know what you've come to do. And if it hadn't already been done, I pray that right now you'll do it. But Lord, we thank you for what you've already said and what you've already done. But we come to the part of the service that might be the most critical moment of the entire day. Could be of someone's entire life. That right now we have to determine in our heart what are we going to do with Jesus. Lord, I pray today that if there's one person here that would like to know this gladness, like to know this peace, that would like to know not only to have such a need, but to have that need met and satisfied by a real, living, present, holy God, I pray they'd come to Jesus. Lord, if there's a lost person in this room, I don't care if they're young, I don't care if they're old, I don't care if this is the first time they've been in this building, I don't care if they've been a lifetime attendee and member of Antioch Baptist Church. If there's somebody in here today that could hear the Spirit of God speak to their heart and tell them they need to be saved, let them take all that other stuff off and come and be saved today. Lord, if there's somebody here today that's got a burden in their life, a heartache that they're dealing with, something that they're having to carry, that they just need to stop and recognize that this troublesome, burdensome, hurtful day is still a day God made. And I'm going to rejoice. And I'm still going to be glad in it. Because of what Jesus did for me and because of his constancy in my life, his presence, his help, his word, 
I will rejoice. Maybe today there's somebody that just needs to say it to the Lord. Maybe they need to say it to themselves. Maybe they need to say it to the devil today. I just pray today that somebody in here get free right in the middle of their storm. Lord, I know you can deliver us from what we're going through. But I also know that a lot of times you don't. And that's all right. I just pray for that one in the middle of the storm that you'd meet them right there and hit them head on and let them know I'm with you. I'm with you. Wherever you go, let's be bold and courageous because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Lord, there's somebody in here that needs to hear this this morning. And I pray today that we'd respond like we heard. Maybe we need to come get in this altar and say, Lord, I need you. Maybe we need to come get in this altar and say, Lord, I thank you because you've met my need and you continue to sustain me in this life. Maybe we need to come today and say, Lord, I'm ready to give it up and come to Jesus and be saved. Whatever that need is today, I just pray you'd have your way. I am so thankful for your presence this morning. And I'm so thankful today that it's not about a song and it's not about a sermon and it's not about a preacher or a singer or a people, but it's about you. So I'm just going to get out of the way and ask you, Lord, to handle your invitation however you want to and let us do what we're supposed to do in Jesus' name. Amen.